All right, we were getting Charlie to make some uh, changes uh, to our code base for us and explaining things as we went. I just want to summarize some of the things we talked about. Uh, we added two lines of code, uh, really, here. Um, the solenoid and the compressor. Actually, um, really, we're just trying to test these lines. Um, uh, Sebastian had added um, this one, uh, at least. And um, w that was a problem because we were instantiating it down here in the robot, and it would we which we shouldn't do anyway. Um, and just briefly, why the reason why you wouldn't want this uh, code down here um, is because uh, you want it available, you want it scoped so everything in your robot can can access it. So right here is our class robot. These are all of these are the properties of a robot. These are what a robot has. Um, what like how many eyes, how many arms, how many you know everything that we declare here is now available in all of the methods. Like when we when our robot first turns on um, and initializes, um, when autonomous mode initializes. So if we want the same sort of things to be available everywhere we want to as much as possible declare them here it's not totally limited so when we s set up our initialization this stuff is running so the uh, the triggered effects um, maintain themselves so we have set those up uh, in the system so it is not uh, once we switch to one mode, it doesn't necessarily mean the stuff that in our robot init method is canceled. However, to make objects, to make uh, things like our solenoid accessible everywhere, we de we declare them right under the class heading, um, and this is the class heading. So what we wanted to do today was to uh, see if we could get the grabber, the arm. Um, to to flex to move and so we um, we hooked up the um, pneumatics so the compressed air that will um, shoot uh, extend and retract a piston and so uh, we wanted to see if we can get that moving the guys were starting to test it and c bypassing all controls can just power up the machine um, by just feeding it power directly and um, getting it to uh, work. They were having some problems um, activating, uh, sustaining enough pressure to, to, to move the elements, um, but they had a, it sounded like they had a solution in mind for that uh, that they'll take care of. In the meanwhile, we wanted to see if we could get that set up so that our software would be ready to control those elements. Just like this, where we set up our, our joystick and then we set uh, a reactor, which just listens and, and reacts to things, um, uh, gets set up to watch for when our button, uh, when this returns true, that we press button 11. And when that happens, to call this method um, to activate this. Um, this is an arrow function. This is a, a special thing in, uh, that's been around in Java 8 and so what we wanted to set was when I press button 9 on the controller it does something with the solenoid and so the things that we found in the documentation that a double solenoid can do which is controlling the the air pressure um, to the tank and to the, our, our, our piston and so uh, the the things that it has available is K off, K forward, and K reverse. So I've turned this information over to the hardware team and they're getting on to accurately describing um, to us uh, what each one does so that we can label things appropriately. So today when we originally pushed our code and the robot wouldn't, uh, wouldn't run, uh, what we were noticing is that um, that it was saying there was a red light flashing in the driver station console and saying that robot code wasn't loaded and that was because we were trying to instantiate or trying to create 
two double solenoids and this the second one we had had the same port uh, and to to figure out that that was the cause we commented out all of the um, things so I uh, we just selected um, a whole bunch of uh, items and then pressed uh, control backspace um, which comments it all out or command backspace if I mean backslash if that's uh, if you're on a Mac and uh, and then we added one in at a time until we found out where the problem was and then we looked into it and figured out oh that's why it's being caused um, because we were we were declaring two that were trying to hog the same asset. So our problem now is um, we, uh, how do we get the compressor going? So uh, if you if we power it up directly it start it's worse to life and starts building up uh, uh, pressure to operate uh, our pneumatic devices. Um, so we're instantiating it here we're, we're declaring it in memory and giving it the variable name C. And then we're starting it up here. And then um, once we get to our teleop init, when our in, uh, remote control session turns on, um, we are setting the closed loop control, which in the documentation seemed to imply that it's uh, maintained pressure, um, that it would start um, activating the compressor. We need to uh, read up on the compressor documentation in Java and figure out exactly how uh, that device gets activated in um, using the WPI libraries and that's what this is uh, using. Um, if we can't find documentation there um, within this WPI library um, then we can start investigating further into the strongback library to see if which which extends WPI. It, it, they import WPI and, and oftentimes build in helper functions that just make things uh, a little bit easier on programmers. Um, we, uh, we use that frequently uh, throughout this stuff. Um, and so uh, if we can't find how to activate the compressor from a uh, excuse me from a WPI perspective we can also investigate um, how uh, where we might find the instructions in strongback we're still waiting for um, Bobby to continue experimenting with the smart dashboard to try to get an, an autonomous mode selection going he has some uh, code over in a different uh, branch of our git repository that uh, I'm hoping that he'll give it a try and to see if um, if we can once we activate or autonomous mode init's that it'll, as some of this code has commented out, that it will grab the command that uh, was selected on the smart dashboard and pass that into either strongback or a WPI, a WPI uh, command initialization. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm hoping to see happen there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.